our virtual newsroom for telecom professionals. Joining us here today at Telecom Exchange 2012, we're honored to have Mr. Hunter Newby. He's the CEO of Allied Fiber. Hunter, welcome to JSA TV. Thanks, Jamie. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having us. Thanks mm -hmm. for coming. Yep. So uh, tell us a little bit about Allied Fiber first. Okay, um, Allied Fiber is a carrier neutral infrastructure provider. We're essentially in the real estate business and we are building duct and rail to rights of way and placing fiber in that duct and also providing access points to the fiber on a very short increment for fusion splicing. And then well, every 60 miles we have uh, Allied Fiber neutral co-location facilities, which is sort of inherent in the distance light travels in long haul. Uh, but it's also acting as sort of a local meet me room for the surrounding areas to improve rural broadband and wireless backhaul and, and distributed cloud computing and things like that. And we've got a multi phase build plan uh, across the country. Uh, we've actually started, believe it or not, uh, in Georgia, which is part of our phase two before our phase one, actually. Uh, but demand is everywhere, so and we're, we're seeing that. We saw that many years ago. We built the model, uh, we put a relationship together, uh, an agreement that's in place with Norfolk Southern Railroad for 25 years. Um, and we've been executing on our plan. And, um, you know, it's a good time. It's been a bit challenging to get to this point, but uh, the tide's definitely turning in terms of awareness um, and the need, so. For sure, and, and you're even hearing this in today's headlines. Just, uh, just the other day, the president was talking about this necessary need for bandwidth infrastructure. You wanna talk a little bit more about that? Sure, yeah, so um, President Obama signed uh, an executive order uh, to essentially open up federal roads which is code for rights of way and land um, and some other things but the most important sort of elements of it were opening up federal roads for broadband infrastructure projects which is also code for fiber um, you know there's other elements of broadband but broadband doesn't really have a meaning um, there's so many definitions of what broadband is depending on what state or county you're in uh, the basic premise though is that it needs fiber so um, what president obama actually said uh, relative to the executive order was, we can't wait. And I thought that was a very telling sort of statement. We can't wait sort of implies that we're waiting for something, which means we don't have it, which means that we need it because we're waiting for it. And if you sort of dissect that, that statement, we can't wait. So then this executive order comes out and you look at what it means to open up federal roads for fiber infrastructure. Basically what President Obama is saying is that the United States doesn't have the fiber infrastructure that it needs and, and we how, can't wait. And how does that compare nationally to, to the global landscape? Are we behind the times? Um, well the times are what they are and everyone's part of them but we are behind in terms of a real infrastructure plan for the nation for a couple of reasons. Um, most notably is the size of the United States, the geography. It's just a large country. And if you look at, uh, on a comparative basis, other countries that the United States is compared to, there's an organization, OECD. Uh, they're based in Europe, actually France, I believe. And they place the United States somewhere around 18th or 19th on the list wow. yeah, of countries uh, in terms of broadband speeds, average speeds available to consumers, and broadband penetration. And that's a little bit unfair. The United States is placed on a list with countries, um, for example, Belgium, Luxembourg. Yeah, Luxembourg. Yeah. Uh, that, you know, they are countries, it's true. Right. Um, but as a country, yeah, geographically, they're the size of, you know, Rhode Island. Yeah, could stay. Could stay. <laughs> and um, I always bring that up. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the issue is that the geographic disparity means more cost. And how do you reach those places? Well, you need rights of way, you need access. So the federal roads, essentially the opening up of the rights of way by what President Obama put forward is to get all the agencies to act together in concert and eliminate the red tape so that entities can come and apply essentially for contiguous rights of way through counties and states and not have to deal with 17 different groups and all these the paperwork and it can't get done. Right. We're behind because of bureaucracy, because of rights of way issues and, and you know disparity of the rights and not just the, the geography. So if you look at some other countries, they're more fortunate because they're smaller. But that's only today. They might have really good fiber infrastructure and good broadband speeds and penetrations for their you know, citizens, but their countries aren't getting any bigger. 
So it's a challenge for them sort of long term. And the smaller countries realize that they must make an investment in this infrastructure today because it is the future of their GDP growth. It is the future of their economy. It's the future of jobs. It's the future of healthcare and education and everything else. We have the same exact need, but we have a much bigger sort of hole to fill. Um, but it's good, it's encouraging, it's refreshing. Um, not so much for me to be aware of the fact that the United States has a problem in this regard. I've known this for years, um, and we have at Allied Fiber. Um, but it's sort of encouraging to see that at the presidential level in the country, that it's, we can't wait, we need to do this and we need to do it you know, yesterday. Well, great. Now, how does that help? There's been an overhang for a decade of this now myth of a fiber glut in the United States, which hopefully between you know, Obama's announcement, the executive order, um, what Mayor Bloomberg announced last week for New York City, five different initiatives, um, and, and several other things that are happening around the country right now, hopefully that puts to bed the whole concept that there's a glut of fiber everywhere. There's more fiber than we'd ever need, and it's already everywhere and all plugged in. If that were true, there wouldn't have needed to be the U.S. broadband stimulus. There wouldn't need to be an executive order to open up federal roads. There wouldn't need to be Michael Bloomberg saying, we have to fix the city. But if there was a glut, there wouldn't be a problem. There's a big problem. And if the biggest city in this country, and one of the biggest in the world, New York, is having this problem, every city in the country, and the country itself, and the states and the counties, are all having this issue. There are certain cities that are shining stars, Chattanooga, Tennessee is a really good example of a great city in the U.S. Um, Riverside, California, which just actually won uh, the top intelligent community from the Intelligent Community Forum this year um, out of the top seven. Yeah, so actually it was really great um, you know, that, that they won, um, being number one, because um, there was a lot of international cities on the list. So it was good for them That's to be amazing. picked. Yep. Uh, you were on that panel? Uh, I'm a juror for the ICF, yeah. So I me and a lot of other people get to vote <laughs> on that. But it's great to have the insights and to meet the people really from around the world. So to your point, from a global perspective, how do we compare? Well, we're right in there. I mean, the Intelligent Community Forum is based here in New York, and you know it's run by people from here, but they go out, like Lou Zaccarella, they go out everywhere in the world and bring together all these different cities that all have the same common interests the same needs, the same problems, whether they're in Ulu, Finland, or they're in Stratford, Ontario, or they're in you know, uh, South Korea, or in Japan, or wherever. We're all the same. We all need to build fiber infrastructure. So you're gonna deal with rights away issues, you're gonna deal with duct or aerial, and the type of cable, and where it gets terminated, what the business model is, who lights it, you know, who sells lit services, who provides broadband to the home. Every single country has the same issues. It's happening globally. Some countries are addressing it a little bit more head on than others. And again, like I said from the beginning, some countries have a bigger issue to contend with because of the size of their country. Australia is another perfect example. Australia announced the National Broadband Network, NBN, several years ago, and they basically unseated Telstra, which is the incumbent telephone company who had a monopoly, essentially. And the government took back the rights at the dirt level and the duct level to build fiber infrastructure to make it independent and neutral from the incumbent because they decided as a country and a continent, by the way, this is a big place, a lot of geography, the single most important issue politically, economically, is the country needs a fiber plan in order to enable broadband, in order to enable the workforce and tap the resource that the country has, the greatest resource any country has, which is its people. Yes. And they are so far out ahead of this, I mean the Australians, in terms of having a plan, a real plan. I mean, yeah, it's expensive and it's going to be take a long time and there's a lot of opposition to it. I mean, you know, the incumbent telephone company actually tried to back an opposition party in the last presidential election to take out the people that were in power that instituted the NBN. That's how singularly important this issue is for a country, Australia, in the world. So I think every country needs to pay the same respect to what they noticed and have a real plan or a path to a real plan and or just say here's the problem how do we address it and not just keep brushing it off like oh someone else is going to do it the government's going to do it or the telephone companies are going to do it or google's going to do it a lot of people thought google was going to build out the whole united states and they picked kansas city and it's good that they did at least that but that's only one city right every city needs it that's right so we're helping <laughs> this is why i love talking with you hunter because you really put it in perspective, what we do on a daily basis at Allied Fiber in our industry, um, 
enabling people to communicate, to, to share information, critical information, security is on the line. Um, yeah. You know, what we're doing matters. Totally. Uh, and even the president notices. It so. underpins the economy, the GDP growth. I mean, if we don't grow GDP, our debt will crush us. Yes. Every country. Look at Europe. They're flying apart. Greece is like gone. Yeah. Spain's now teetering. Italy's next. They can't keep printing money. Yeah. You know, ECB can't keep printing money. Yeah. You have to have something behind it. There has to be growth. And governments don't know how to grow. They know how to print and inflate and tax. And it's up to us, the business people, to actually build the infrastructure to drive the economy. I think from where we are today to the amount of percentage growth of GDP you can get just by enabling people to have real, true, almost synaptic devices, is there's so much more room to grow in terms of productivity, new job creation, apps. Apps are productivity. Apps are efficiency. So we don't have to add more people to the country. We don't have to, you know, well, like, you don't technically have to invent anything because we have the tools necessary. We know how to build fiber. We have devices. We just need more of it. We need to enable. Yeah, in the hands of people so that it's always on. Now, on the one hand, that's kind of sad because individuals, our are, are, are hu human side is disappearing quickly. This generation, the very next generation, it's not going to resemble what we all grew up with and knew, yeah. unfortunately. But it is making this transition. Um, and I think that that's the only thing that we all can do to sort of build the economic escape velocity to get out from underneath the weight of the, the crushing compounding debt without just writing it all down to zero, which of course no one's going to agree to do that, right? Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, you're right. It's a very important topic and we're all part of it. And certainly Allied Fiber is enabling this growth and, and building a better tomorrow and we so appreciate that. Thank you. So thank you, Hunter, for joining us, and thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA TV.